Welcome to episode 166 of Star Wars and Scotch. It's Tim and it's Kevin. Hey. And we're here to talk about episodes 10 and 11. Uh, 11 yeah. and 12? 10 and 11. 11 and 12. 10 and 11? Bigger The out. last two episodes of Bad Batch. Um, <laughs> I'll never remember the episode numbers until we get to the finale. Uh, definitely not filler. Tim? Oh no no no! I will. F- no 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 no! It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't really filler. That was not. No filler. no no! It wasn't. It, no no! It definitely pushed. It pushed the story along. I was actually really surprised uh, with the first episode. Second episode, I was kind of just like, eh, I kind of saw this one coming. But first episode, I was actually really impressed. I have a theory and a question for you, but we'll get to that later. Sure. Um, yeah, we'll get there soon. How's your week been so far? Uh, busy. Lots of lots of hell diving. Oof. I saw they're raising lots level of, caps to like one fifty. Yeah, they did that yesterday in the patch, so you know, it's, uh, it's it's nice to have something to grind for. They they introduced some new enemy types, especially for Star Wars fans. You'll really enjoy fighting the automatons because they have ATATs now. I saw that. They don't call them ATATs. They are, they are factory walkers. They are uh, if you're familiar with uh, Hell Divers, they fa- they gave fabricators legs and uh, turrets, and they're scary. One so, one day and, we will and gunships. They have gunships now too, which is really cool. One day we will have a Star Wars Hell Divers game. I'm in it. No, I Commando. you know I was actually talking to somebody about that at the gym today, um, and I, I think I think anyone would get crucified if they tried rolling out a a hell diver clone with a different IP on top of it. Republic Commando Two, make it happen. I mean, that's what I want. I'd love that. Republic Commando Two. I did notice too in the episode today, because this is like completely irrelevant. Some of the commandos sure. are clones, and some are not. Um, which are you talking about? Like when they came off the the drop so ship? Scorch, the one that um uh shot the kid, uh, is a commando. You heard it, or a clone. You heard it in his voice. And then the commando mm-hmm. that went with Emery to the drop point was not a clone. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. I mean, that makes sense. You could hear it in their voice. I think it was that one. One of the other ones that spoke during the episode was not a clone. It was clearly a stormtrooper voice. Um, they're also phased. I mean, like we're we're in the peak time of all of the clones getting phased out. Yeah, it was just interesting that the commando. It's weird because it's like they won't trust the clones, but the commandos. Right, we'll get into it later. I'll figure it yeah. out. Yeah. Before we go any further, though, we hope you're shaking up the way you wake up with King's Coast Coffee this morning because I am. I am doing Roaster's Choice. What are you drinking? Espresso, mm. Bow Breaker. I am. It's really been my. It's been my. The Americano has just been my go-to lately because it's it's fast to get ready. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of like brewing a whole pot and uh, you can you can like really twist it. You know, you can do fun things like today. I put a little bit of uh, monk fruit um, over the puck Mm -hmm. before I pulled the shot Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, just sweetened it up a little bit just to, you know, see like how that tasted. And not bad. I have monk fruit in my cereal. Magic spoon. Nice. Magic spoon. Wait, (laughs) hold on. Wait, the cereal that you're using the new milk on? Yeah, it's uh, the magic. (gasps) Holy shit, Kevin. The magic spoon has monk fruit in it. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were adding no. monk fruit on top of your cereal with the sweetened no, milk. That's that how you they found. sweeten the magic spoon is with the uh, uh, monk fruit. Yeah, with monk fruit. Yeah. But then you also found this this Chobani milk that you're raving about. It's so good. It just tastes like a bowl of Fruit Loops. That's what it tastes like. I'm happy for but it. My tum tums didn't hurt afterwards. Yes, I had a little good. bit more sugar than Tim would have liked, but <laughs> we'll be okay. I promise. <laughs> I was like, Kevin, this sugar content. He's like, it's once a week, Tim. It'll be fine. I also don't eat candy. I'm not a candy guy. I don't like chocolate. Uh, it's just not uh, milk chocolate, but it's I don't have like a sweet tooth for it. So like that's my candy, essentially. Good. That's my treat. Nice. Cool. Cakeshostcoffee.com. Make sure you get your uh, spring surge and be on the lookout for many other things. Maybe a King's Coast t-shirt or something in the future. <laughs> who knows like what is what else is coming <laughs> who knows make sure you get those gcx tickets i got the um creator announcements the first couple proved them yesterday so you'll be finding out nice. some creators that'll be joining us uh, i've got to record mine I, and, I got my i got my script and uh i signed the contract for the after party so um We'll be hearing about that soon as well. Yeah. So GCXevent.com, uh, August 16th and 17th. We're doing it at Chuck E. Cheese. Orla- nope. Nope. Orlando, Florida, Rosen Sugar Creek. <laughs> Damn it's it. It's not at Chuck E. Cheese. They don't allow. Could you imagine an after party <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese? We would ruin a Chuck E. Cheese. We would ruin <laughs> a Chuck E. Cheese. Like, it would be bad. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, they do serve alcohol there, so. Do they really? Yeah, you can get beer there and wine. What? In the Always been able to get beer and wine there. Always. I didn't know that. Wait, even when I was a even kid? Even when you were a kid. No. Why do you think our parents were so okay with us going there? I thought they loved us. And they could have a drink while we were shoot, throwing the ski ball across the... I always thought Dave and Buster was breaking. I thought that, I thought that they were the first to market with I mean, the whole... I mean, Dave like, and Buster just... Don't play video games and drink. Took Chuck E. Cheese and made it adult. That's all they did. That's yeah, all. that's fair. That's it, so... Um, okay. GCXevent.com slash tickets, August 16th and 17th, Rose and Shingle Creek, Orlando, Florida. Tim will be there and a host of other folks. I will. I will definitely be there. It would be weird if I wasn't Maybe there. Dr. Lupa will be there, too. Just maybe. He's not coming. <laughs> Someone's going to clip that and be like, Lupo, Tim, say you're not coming. Oh, my GTA. God. Yeah, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. Star Wars and Scotch will definitely be live from there because I texted some friends yesterday to see if they would like to be a part of it. They might be the same friends nice. that have been a part of it for the past few years. Who knows? <laughs> I'm like, wait. It's becoming an annual tradition. Yeah. All right. So... And Lab 77 just dropped Helldivers merch. You can get Darkness branded. You can get regular. Well, it's held. It's it, for, for legality reasons. It's Helldiver esque merch. Sure. It's Helldiver. It's Helldiver themed merch. All right. It's Heck Divers merch. Uh, That's right. We're Heck Delving. Heck Delving uh, merchandise. Yeah, rain, rain down. Rain down liberty. And I happen to have Tim's uh, logo, or you can get it without Tim's logo if you're into the Heck Delving. Um, yeah. Yeah, we we uh, we thought it'd be fun to offer up two different versions because I know there's a lot of people who like Helldivers who might not know who I am, but still want to you know get some merch. I was like, this is a great business opportunity for Lab, and then also let's just throw my logo on top of it and see what happens. So it, it's been working. It's actually been working out. It was it was a great plan. Cool. If you good happen job, to be at Disney and see a swole gentleman walking around in one of the tank tops next week, it's me. <laughs> I was like, where do I go to Disney? Oh, you it was ass. Coming. Let me have uh, one cathartic like, moment, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> it's me. Like I didn't know I was going to Disney. It's me. Oh, sorry. It's Kevin. I've been doing the Henry Cavill arm workout again. <laughs> <laughs> I should have did the tattooed arm. It always looks better. <laughs> <laughs> this one, not so much. This one, I didn't even flex. I just left it flat, too. I was like, I was like, are we flexing, Kevin? <laughs> I just left it flat, Jeez. at least with the flex, it pops up a bit, but <laughs> <laughs> look at that arm. Yeah, you're crushing. <laughs> no, I'm proud of you. Hey, I'm, I'm at my lowest weight in my late 30s, so let's go. Keep it going. Um, Happy to see it. Cool. Jumping into Star Wars, though. So you posted late last night. I'll let you kind of dive into it. I didn't get to read the article. Um I'll be honest with you, I didn't read the article either. Well, the headline was probably enough, but apparently the boss over at Embracer Group after he just got, what was it, how much from the sale of? $400, $450 million or yeah, something like that, so right? that'll make you happy. It was almost like half a billion, I think, for uh, Gearbox, right? Yeah, they sold Gearbox. If you don't know who Gearbox is, Gearbox is the creators of Borderlands, Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Um, do they have any other IPs that people would know? I don't remember. I don't remember what Embracer has. Anyway, Embracer is the folks behind the remake for Star Wars The Old Republic, um, which is highly anticipated, yep. but has also been a oh, freaking boy. roller coaster. Um, as a person who says it's one of the top three games they've ever played in their life, I'm eagerly anticipating this. Um, and it's yeah. been, uh, it's happening. It's not happening. It's happening. It's not happening. The, yeah. is it the, it's the CEO, right? Of Embracer that said it. Yeah. So, so this is, uh, so this is a, an article that dropped on IGN yesterday and, um, they had an interview with the Saber Interactive CEO, Matthew Karch. Got it. And he confirmed that the company took Kotar with it during its split. Oh no, they split from Embracer group. Mm -hmm. So Saber Interactive split from Embracer Group, and while they did that, they took Kotar with them. Okay, so it's nothing new. The Embracer. game is still the, the game is still in active development. Uh, he says, "quote It's clear and it's obvious that we're working on this." I think that's bullshit. Uh, first <laughs> of all, I just want to go ahead and say, Matthew, I know you're listening. Um, that's bullshit because we have been in a veil of mystery and confusion when it comes to your video game. Uh, and he said, it's been in the press numerous times. Yeah, the press is us going, is it coming out? I don't know. Um, and he says, what I will say is that the game is alive and well, and we are dedicated to making sure we exceed consumer expectations. 
We're, keep in mind, this is a remake, not a remaster. All right, so it's not like we're just going to get the same game start to finish. So it, I'm curious to see how far they go with changing up the Kotar formula. Are we going to get the Final Fantasy VII uh, treatment? Are we going to get this ability to like experience the old Knights of the Old Republic and then also this new version where you have more freedom are they going to lean into outlaws is it going to be more open world is it going to be like grand theft auto or red dead redemption i don't know i have no idea and, and that's why it's really frustrating when he says it's been in the press numerous times the game is it's clear that and obvious that we're working on this outside outside of the initial trailer that was teased back in 2021 during the playstation showcase keep in mind this was three years ago. And that was the only time that we heard about this game. So it's a little frustrating that the, the, the um, Saber Interactive is going to take this stance of like, I don't know why you guys think that this game wouldn't come out. We have done nothing but just continue to feed you with information and, and things like that. So a little frustrated with this. Uh, it says Karch would, no offer, would, would not offer further details. Uh, but an investor call following the announcement of Saber's departure, Embracer CEO Lars uh, Winsfors implied that KOTAR Remake will still be a long way away. The game has undergone a long limbo, having been announced in 2021 after three years of development at Asper. It paused indefinitely due to lack of progress and then revived again at Saber Interactive. So we've, we've gone from one development house to the next in a three-year period. It stalled. So it sounds like there was a lot of internal conflict between the development group, the publisher, and probably Disney and Lucas. If I and I I know very well how Disney operates when it comes to their video games. It is not easy to work with Disney and with Lucas when it comes to Star Wars IPs. Um, I worked uh, with Dice on multiple Battlefront titles, and it's not easy. It's not easy for them. There's a lot of checks and balances. A lot of um, may, mother, may I, you know, a lot of asking for permission to do things, making sure everything is in line with Canon and making sure that it, it all makes sense. Um, there's not a lot of freedom when it comes to, uh, getting to kind of take the IP and do what you want with it. And so I'm sure that is what, um, happened when they say it underwent a long limbo period. I am assuming they went in and they're like, this isn't working. This isn't our vision. This doesn't line up with where we want to take the franchise when it comes to the Old Republic because this is going to usher in. This is supposed to herald the Old Republic. Like, there would be no other way. You couldn't drop Old Republic literature. You couldn't drop Old Republic comic books and make that your first ever when the Old Republic was introduced to us via a video game back in way back when, 2002, 2000. 2000, 2000. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like 10 or 11 when that came out. Yep, 2000. Uh, it is, IGN goes on to say, we spoke with Karch on a number of other topics uh, surrounding Saber Interactive's departure from Embracer Group, which saw Karch acquire it back via his own holding company, Beacon Interactive, uh, including the deal that were, there, were, there were at least 38 video game projects, over 3,000 employees, and studios such as Nimble Giant, Madhead Games, Slipgate, New World Interactive, 3D Realms, and all Saber-branded studios. That's insane. What an acquisition. That is mind-blowing. Um, and that's it. That's all we got from IGN. Um, I'm really tired of getting of getting put on this roller coaster. Uh, it, is, it, is a con it is a constant up and down when it comes to Knights of the Old Republic and this remake. I, I, it pisses me off that they thought it'd be a good idea to release this, this teaser during the showcase without any meat on the bone. Like literally, they must have they must have just worked up this whole let's drop Revan. Vaporware teaser. Yeah, that's all it is. I mean, at this point, it is. It's the day before. Mm -hmm. Oh God, it's, I hope it's, it's like, not we, the day we, before. But 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 honestly, it's the day before. It currently in its in its state right now, all we know is that this exists. And we've gotten one teaser that tells us nothing about the game. They haven't told us the direction. They haven't told us what does a remake for Knights of the Old Republic look like? I don't know. Is it going to be turn-based? Is it going to be free? Is it going to be open world? Is it freestyle combat? Is it turn-based combat? Is I, I don't know. How much of an RPG element is there? Is it MMO? Is it multiplayer? Is it co-op? I No one knows. No one truly knows. And so that's just very, very frustrating. I would assume and it... Hi, Kyler. I would, res I love you, I would assume it would uh, remain... 
Uh, single player. I don't think it'll be co-op. Um, but imagine if it was co-op. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if you were able to build? Because how many people could you have in a, in a squad? It was four. It was four. Three. It was you and three. three. And three companions. No, two. Right? Or is it you and two companions? Yeah. You and two companions. Could you imagine if you and two of your friends, they like the normal three-player squad, like you have in Apex and like in other games, like BRs. And so, like the three-player squad formula works very well. Could you imagine if you and your buddies could like just take control? Like you could play Bastila, and then like Ben plays a fucking HK, and like you could do whatever you want. Like that's sick. Like I think that would be neat. But at the same time, it in in Final Fantasy VII, it's single player. It works very very. I think well. we're just gonna um, copy Final Fantasy. I think that's what I think. Like on it, my that is what my heart <coughs> tells which me. Works. It is. It is. This is this is going to be a Final Fantasy VII remake. Which I'm totally fine with. It, they did well, and if they if they pull that page from their playbook, it would be smart for them to break it up into into multiple parts. Oh, I hope not. It's a long. I'm just saying. I mean, if they, I mean, that's what they did with Final Fantasy VII, and it allowed them. It allowed the reason why they did it is because it allowed them to build off more. It allowed them to really deep dive into those segments and really make them a lot more alive. So I mean, I. I don't know. I, I'm not sure how they go about doing it. I don't. I would. I wouldn't want this to be a two-parter. I would hate for it to be. I have to buy the game twice. Um, I don't know. I really. I really don't know. In my in my head, the way they do it, it's just like Final Fantasy. You have the ability to play turn-based. You have the ability to freak combat. It's going to be more open world. The ability to go from planet to planet. Hopefully, the transitions. You know, it's not cutscenes. It's like, oh, I actually get to pilot my ship. This is really sick. Like you have more. You have more control. You have more ownership of the character of Revan, of of everything going on. Uh, your your decisions feel more impactful than they did in the original. We'll see. Well, you have. I'm just. I'm frustrated. You have so in the game. You start out on Telos, which is the small little mining facility after the ship intro. After Telos, yeah, kind of open. Yep, you kind of opens up like uh, Star uh, uh, Starfield, and then you go to Terrace, which uh, is kind of like your um, your intro area to learn the game a bit more. Terrace gets destroyed. Well, it doesn't get destroyed; it gets glassed. Um, and yes. then you end up on Dantooine. That's where you get your the you used to be a Jedi thing, and then you can from there you can go to the four planets. You can go to Tatooine. This is why I don't think it can be broken up because you had the choice of where you wanted to go when you wanted to go there. So you could go to Tatooine, Korriban, right. Manan, and Kashyyyk in any order you yep. wanted. Now there's 175 different ways you can play the game to get different reactions from people, different combinations. This is what makes the game so mm -hmm. innovative. Right. And all of these different ways you can go about going to these planets and experiencing the game, then make dark side choices, light side choices, neutral choice. Like the possibilities are endless. There are characters you you can turn to the dark side. There are characters that won't. Uh, it's just evil. Bastila was my favorite. Oh yeah, especially at the end. She's hot. Dude. She's hot. She's super hot. Yeah, she's hot. Um, evil Bastila was my favorite. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. The, we would rule the galaxy together. That whole thing. Um, <clears throat> And then at the end, uh, when you go to the Ricotta stuff, I think it's called Leon or something like that, the planet. I can't remember the name of it. It's been a long time. Um, so, I mean, there's... Uh, that's why I don't think it can be broken up into parts. It's because you do have the freedom of choice and I agree combinations of characters that you can bring with you to each planet. Like, I remember... It's Mass Effect. I mean, like the whole it's it's literally it was the it was the groundwork for Mass yeah, Effect. Yeah, it was the same developers. Um Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, yeah, the guys who developed Knights of the Republic went on in Bioware to then create the Mass Effect trilogy. And the first one's still better than all the other ones, in my opinion. I've done a playthrough of all Mass Effect games, and the first Mass Effect game is the best I one. I mean, I distinctly remember you met Juhani on Dantooine, and if you didn't speak to her the right way, you had to fight her and you could potentially kill her, and then you could lose her as a companion for the entire game if you didn't scum save mm -hmm. it. Um, and then if you brought certain combinations of characters to Korriban, it was always interesting because some would, you know, embrace the teachings if you did and others would, it was just, it was just a fun, I, I will never forget <laughs> going into the temple on Korriban and seeing the Sith ghosts and like, that was dark and There's it four. was really intriguing. There's four temples. What? It's the, I just, I just remember going in, into one of them. And going down and seeing the Sith ghost, and I remember it was like this, like long. It was like a long bridge, if I remember correctly. And it was like it was dark and misty. I think that's too um, There was like big pillars and stuff. It's been a long time since I've played it, but that's like again, like this is a game that I played 
25 years ago, almost 25 years ago. And I, I still remember parts of it. Do you think they're holding back the old Republic for this game? Like everything's like contingent on this game releasing first. Yes. And then the I, I, again, open? I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that they want to usher in the old Republic with the video game, because if they didn't, they would get crucified. Mm -hmm. If they, if they came out with a book or they came out with comics or anything else that wasn't a video game, they would be destroyed because the old Republic is the video game. There's nothing else that people can call back to with the old Republic outside of the video games. That's it. And so for them to then release more content that is canonical because the old Republic in its current state, Knights of the Old Republic is not canonical. It does not like outside of certain characters being canonized, nothing else matters in that. Like, yes, it's fun, but it's all EU legend at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you have, you have to bring this video game out or it'll go terrible for you because then they will be unable to bring out Dawn of the Jedi because if they do Dawn of the Jedi first and then we go into Knights of the Old Republic, I mean, at that point, Knights of the Old Republic doesn't come out for another 10 years. Yeah. And and then you're just going to keep getting this flip-flop of like, oh, this 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 development house is is going under, so then it's going to be acquired by another one, and we're going to continue doing this This is round were, robin. You were five years, 10 years away from this new generation having no clue what the Old Republic is. And maybe that's part of the strategy. I think that's dumb because they are in the perfect time for everyone who played Knights Old Republic. They are all now grown-ups and they have children. If you want to bring in a new fan base, because like we our kids are already fans of Star Wars, but they don't have they don't have what we had as far as Knights Old Republic. Like we can't we can't play that together with them. No, I try and currently the only video game you can play is Jedi Survivor and Jedi Fallen Order. And that's really it as far as like Star Wars video games go. You could play you could play uh, Star Wars Galaxy, which is, you Swotor. know, like that's a mobile phone. You could play Swotor, but let's be honest. Swotor, no offense, Kevin, is boring as hell. It's it, like there's no way that you could get a child to sit down, I think, and and really absorb all of that in its current state. I I think what they did, even even Kotar, there's a lot of stuff in Knights of the Old Republic that probably went way over my head because I didn't understand oh. it. But then I went back and played it again, you know, and I've played it again, and I'm sure there's still stuff that I, I would assume adult me would probably take that in a lot different. And so this is a great time for, for us to sit down, you know, in the next five years with our kids and experience that and talk to them about it and, and live it together and experience that together. And if you miss that, I don't think, like you said, I don't think anyone's going to be intrigued by Star Wars anymore. Yeah, the... Um <clears throat> or, sorry, they won't be intrigued by the Knights of the Republic. I think there's a lot of Star Wars material. There's a lot of new stuff that's out. Young Jedi is a great example of how you hook the young, like my kid. That's how you hook Kyler, the, the, four, the, the, the four to five. Like they, they, they are all in that perfect age. But then what about your son? He's a little bit older, you know, but he's, he's still a little too young to like really experience, I would say, like Star Wars Online. I think some of those concepts and some of the decisions and all that stuff is a little too advanced for him. No, it is. But if you guys were to sit down with a remade version of Knights Old Republic that had more free base combat, that had like your decisions still matters, but you still had the ability to just like, I want to go to a planet and I just want to swing my lightsaber and have fun. You couldn't do that in Knights Old Republic. You could like engage your lightsaber and you could you could do the emote and you could twirl it. And that was about it, if I remember correctly. I think it was like up on the D-pad. And you'd spin your lightsaber. You'd ignite it and you'd do some womp, 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 womp. And that was about it. But like, what if I want to take my character and I want to go down to Tatooine and I want to go like murder a whole herd of Banthas because it would be fun. I can't do that. I There's there's no way that I could like really enjoy doing that. And so like, I, I hope, I really hope they give us a, a massive game that is a big sandbox similar to Outlaws. You know, and, and maybe that's what they're waiting for. Maybe they're waiting for the other Star Wars games to drop before before they bring this one out. I don't know. I have no idea what's going on. The um, <clears throat> you can do that in Swotor, by the way. Uh, what you can just go and kill a bunch of Banthas? Go all over, not all over Corvan, but you can go through the tombs and just kill crap if you want to. 
Well, yeah, but I mean, but spicy. still, I mean, like how, but, but like, it's still like if, if I want a true Star Wars sandbox experience, like it's not, it's not there right now. And outlaws will be the first one, but you're not a Jedi. You're going to be an outlaw. You're going to be a, 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 essentially a drug runner. Yeah, if you want to, you're going to be a criminal. And that's cool. That's awesome because I think it's neat to tell a story that isn't based around the Force and lightsabers and the Jedi. That's awesome. But Knights of the Old Republic, it, it, sets, it sets a tone for the rest of Star Wars. Like, it is so important that Knights of the Republic is done well and it is explained well because there are things that are happening later on down the line that the only way it would make sense is if you do a callback to the Knights of the Old Republic. The tombs on Korriban that you went to in the game were uh, Mark Aragnos, Naga Sadao, Tulak Hor, and Ajunta Paul. Um, I remember Mark Aragnos. I, re I remember that one. Yeah. So you went to, and then I think you went back to Mark Aragnos' tomb in um, uh, Force Unleashed 1 or 2. I can't remember one of them. You go to go there. Um, you also go there in Jedi Academy. Yeah. You go there in Jedi Academy too. I might be thinking of Jedi Academy instead of Force Unleashed. I think it's Jedi Academy. I think that's what I'm thinking of. I don't think I don't think you go to Jedi tombs in. I don't think you go to Sith tombs in. I think I'm thinking of Jedi Academy. Uh, it's been a while. Jedi Academy was such a good game. Oh my god. Yeah, I, I did stream the um, the Switch version. Uh, but anyway, going back to what you're saying, I tried to show Audrey Kotor, and she made it two and a half, three hours. She was streaming it with me actually, and she was like, "I can't, how, I can't do this." How old was she at that point? Fourteen, fifteen. She was yeah, like, I can't sucks. do this. Like the, con it's too, it's too, the controls we, are too dated. It, you know, because we were conditioned at that time to enjoy video games like that, because that was the freedom that we were given. That was, that was like new age freedom, like Final Fantasy, Natural Republic, Mass Effect, like that, all of that stuff was, was so, it was everything that we ever wanted in a video game. And now when you look back at it, you're like, oh God, that just, that looks so rough. So you're right. It doesn't translate well. No, it's even me replaying it. I've streamed it twice, I think, and it, it was rough both times. Just people have asked me to do play to do playthroughs of it, and I'm like, I'm not touching you'll, it. You'll there, be is, miserable. there is miserable because I know my attention span. I know I will get bored. I will enjoy it for the story, but to get through the story is too painful for me. There's no you way. May as well just watch a YouTube video for seven hours at that point. Especially, and I re I remember the the opening stuff on Coruscant was boring as hell. Uh, you don't, you start on the, it looked like Coruscant. Terrace, it's a big city. Terrace. It's, Is it Terrace? Yeah. The opening stuff on Terrace when you're like trying to just find like starting gear. I remember that being really it, It's boring. so much just running back and forth and like, go talk to this person, go talk to this person. This person threatened you oh. now kill all these people. It was like that. Um, and it was just like the small, very concentrated. That's why I do hope they expand things like that in this game. Like, can I see a little bit more of Terrace before it gets glassed and then what was cool though is in, in swotor then you go back to terrace and it's in ruins and you have to dig through the ruins to get stuff so that was a nice callback because it's hundreds of years later um mm -hmm. and, and the storytelling's there it's just the mechanisms in which we can experience the story that um hopefully get get updated but we we will see yeah i'm on the the Valley of the Dark I Lords. Like such an old, uh, I feel like such an old man just like bitching about video games. Uh, back in back in my day. Um, and no, but back in our day, the game was was top tier. It's one of the best of all time. It's the controls are dated, not the game. I don't care about the graphics. If the controls were somehow a little bit more fluid, and the game itself was a little bit more fluid, I think it, it would be in a much different space. It's just the pacing of the game and just, whatnot is very. It's not easy when you've. 24 years of video games have happened between it. That's all. It's it's still one of the top three games of all time, in my opinion. I think the, the one thing that pisses me off the most that you told me was that Knights of the Republic 2, the only way that you can really enjoy it is if you downloaded a mod for it. Yeah, well, it was supposed to with the Switch release when they re-released it. They were supposed to. It was supposed to come out with that, right? And they never did. Ooh. To my knowledge, if they did, I, I didn't hear anything about it because I stopped playing it when I found out they were going to do it. But yeah, there's there's a huge gap in the story. I forget the planet and the people. It's the your companion has the white robe and the white hair. There's a piece of her mm -hmm. story that's like just missing from the game. Um, so if you want the whole story, you need to download that that mod, if you will. Mm hmm. Uh, unless they did add it to Switch. Last I heard, they were not adding it to Switch because all of the Aspire stuff with Star Wars fell apart. So that was the last I heard. Yeah, and you know it still hasn't hit Switch. That bounty hunter game, that Overwatch Star Wars game that we were saying. Oh, what? That is only that's only available in APAC. 
Because all the people in Australia are like, I don't know, mate. It's great. What's that game called? Uh, is it Star Wars Hunters? Hunters. Hunters? Yeah, we've, we've covered it like three times now. Let's see. Any. Because the only way that you can get it is on the mobile store if you like proxy over to like Australia. Oh, yeah. We had some some Aussie and some folks from India commenting on it like, <laughs> hey, good day, mate. I haven't played the Hunters yet. Oh, that's a shame. God damn it. Bluey playing Hunters. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, I go to like, you can click it like, but why haven't they released it in the U S why isn't it available anywhere else? I don't understand. Like, I understand that mobile gaming and APAC is like, is really popular, but why are they gatekeeping it? I don't understand. I love how this episode has turned into video games. Um, people ask people, people ask me, uh, last week I was talking about this, uh, the podcast and people are like, do you talk about other things on the podcast? Or is it just ours? I was like, no, we, we bitched about video games in the last episode. Mm-hmm. And now we're talking about it again. I love it. Um, but yeah, I just don't, I don't, I don't understand the marketing. I don't understand the reasoning behind it. Like, how can you, how can you tease this? I think they tease it during celebration. Their last they either tease- update on Twitter was July 18th, 2022 of the delay. And then the next thing on Twitter is come see us in Anaheim at Star Wars Celebration on May 26th to 29th in 2022. That's it. What are they doing? What are they doing? I I don't know. I I would like to try this game. Now, here's the you'd have to do You'd have to go download the SDK and then you'd have to install it. You'd have to you'd have to jailbreak it. You'd have to bootleg it into into your phone. So much work. It's not too bad, but still, I mean, like that takes all your iPhone users out of, unless you jailbreak your iPhone. I do have an extra um, phone I'm not using in the house. But again, why do you like again? Why do we have to go through these extreme measures to play this game? I don't know. I, I don't understand. It just it doesn't make any sense to me. So hope, hopefully we we'll get an update soon there. It's just like everything feels like a limbo. We haven't seen anything about Outlaws. Outlaws date got pushed to just 2024. We don't even have a secured locked in date for that. Um, the last thing that we saw was the the gameplay reveal last year, last summer, right? Um, I believe so, yeah. And now I, it just it feels like everything is just sitting in limbo right now when it comes to Star Wars. IPs. I'm confident Outlaws will come out at the end of the year. I think so too. I think originally it was supposed to be for spring, right? It was like April or May. And then I could see it coming out in October or November. I just, I wonder if they were worried about other games coming out. And so they pulled the date and kept the year to see what the landscape looked like to try. Oh, Grand Theft Auto 6 drops this year. That's why a lot of people are pushing things around because of GTA 6. Because they know it's such a behemoth. It comes out, the GTA 6 comes out soon, doesn't it? I'm looking, I think it's the end of the year. I'm looking now. GTA 6 is a release date update as of yesterday. It's next year. Oh, I thought it was this year. Mm-mm. It's next year. Well, then what's going on? Then I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know why you would be, be sitting on that. But they do have a... Uh, Apparently, strip club gameplay leaked yesterday for GTA Six. So, if you're interested in that, man, they have had they have been hit by Rockstar has been leaky. I mean, it's it's one of the most anticipated games of all time. So, how do you know what hasn't been like? Yeah, go ahead, leak that to sate them and what's not. So, sure. I mean, I wish other, if that's the thing, if that's the aggressive guerrilla marketing they're going for, I wish other companies would would do it. Uh, I wish we got I wish we got content trickles. It's just like I don't get it. It's marketing. It's legal. It's all these things. It's IP protection, but. Like keeping gamers in the dark is the worst thing you could possibly do for your brand. Hey, if you if you're a game developer, you you do like if you run a studio, listen. Keeping gamers in the dark is a bad idea. Give us something. Give us some get a little bit of a bone. Something with a little bit of meat on it so that we're happy. But the longer that you keep gamers in the dark, the less you talk about your title, the more frustrated and the less they're going to care about it. Guaranteed. You need content creators to continuously talk about your game, which if you don't release any type of content, they're not going to do that. And then you're going to lose you're going to lose any and all ability to really connect with your fan base. I don't know what they're doing. Lost. Frustrated. We should take a commercial break. Be right back. And we're back. 
Nick, let's talk about Bad Batch. Would you like me to Bad start Batch. with the question I have for you or my theory? Yeah, let's let Ooh, um well does your theory go into your question? Nope. Then hit me with the question. Tim, as an empire apologist or supporter... <laughs> I hate it when you say that because the more and more <laughs> that we dive into Star Wars, the more and more they're just like, man, these are space Nazis. Holy shit. How can you justify the behavior of the empire in these two episodes, Tim? You can't. You absolutely can't, dude. As soon as they started like just doing strafing runs on the boats, I was just like, these goddamn space Kidnapping Nazis. Kidnapping children? Yeah. Yeah, taking taking kids like like just Shooting destroying everyone's way gun. of life. Ah, uh, I mean like the kid the kid was acting up. I mean, like, if I could... Oh, here we go. <laughs> no man, I mean like the more and more we get into like the like when you when you really get past the propaganda and like I always I always like that's the one thing I love about Star Wars and what they've done really well. Uh, they've really leaned like much like much like Helldivers uh, playing into the whole like the the big war machine is there for your uh, is for your benefit. It's to make your life better. We're doing this for you and like all of this shit. It's it's so funny to me when you like when you look at what they've done with Star Wars propaganda use aftermath or not aftermath use. Um, uh, uh, what is what is the what's the the uh, the Rogue One prequel? Um, anyways, the one where they talk about the building of the Death Star. And uh, there's a lot of propaganda in there, which is really, which is really crazy because they 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 go to these they, they go to the, some of these planets that they're strip mining, and they they corral everybody up and they 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 do these big parades and they they try to showcase that the the empire is there to make things better for them. It's we are there to to uh, bring order and justice and prosperity to all corners of the galaxy. And that's just like the very, very, very top layer of everything else that's happening behind the scenes. And then when you really start to peel back that very thin curtain, because everybody sees it, but there's still that little bit of a veil of like, man, they're right. You know, it's like, it's, it's one of those, like, you know, we always talk about how the Joker is a great bad guy because like you just kind of end up where like Thanos is another like great bad guy. We're like, not wrong. And at the same time, like when you look at it at a very shallow with a very shallow lens, you're like, oh, yeah, I could totally see like why the Empire is great. They're bringing order. They're bringing prosperity. Everybody's making money in, in the galaxy is, is is awesome. There's no war. There's no turmoil. If you're inside the core worlds, if you go anywhere outside to the mid rim or to the outer rim, it's shit. It's terrible. Uh, it's really, really bad. And so seeing this again, like we saw it in, in Endor um we see it again in in bad batch they've done a really good job of showcasing just how bad the empire is in bad batch um so yeah i you can't you can't there's no way of justifying any of those actions i was i was really surprised by the vault today i really thought that we knew what was in there and for it to just be a holding cell for kiddos with high m counts was very surprising to me. But now we also know what the key with omega is or blood is a binder to midichlorians it's a binder yeah, I found that, and so that's the first we've ever heard of anything like that, to my knowledge. I don't know what that means. I guess I, it I, means I, that I, you could transfer the midichlorians through her blood, and the blood, her blood type or whatever will accept it. Uh, I mean, you know more about anatomy than I do, but that was my. I mean, like, yeah, I was thinking of it from a food perspective, you know, with meat uh, and putting mustard or mayo or something on, you know, before you put your seasoning. So if your seasoning is your midichlorians and your mustard and mayo is Omega's blood. I will use a food analogy to explain to explain that. That's great. No, I mean, like, you're right. It, it's, it is a tran it's a transportation device. Like, that's all it is. So um, it is allowing it is it is giving the midichlorians the 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 ability to go from one place to the next. So can, and so that's that's very interesting. It's very, very interesting to me. Um, I still I still want to know what Hemlock is doing with the uh, the shadow troopers. Um, oh, that's my I theory. Think there's more. There's more to it than that. Um, like I, I still, I still hold true to think that the shadow troopers and the death troopers are somehow connected in his tablet. I, I want to, I want to super zoom in on his tablet and see what else is on there because, like, he he starts scrolling through things and he gets to the shadow trooper, but there was other stuff that was there. Um, there were some pictures and stuff that looked different than the shadow trooper armor. He, well, and one looked one looked like a like a a dark trooper. Like the like what what Gideon was working on. He said the new ones uh, are not ready yet. Yeah, and so that's what I'm wondering is like, is this going to be is this going to be V1 Dark Trooper 
or are we getting death troopers? I don't know. Well, you walked right into my theory. So, yay. Ready? Yes. That shadow trooper, that's tech. Yeah. Oh, fuck. That's tech. Um, fuck. And there was just too many hints this episode. Uh, and even when I went to Twitter afterwards, there were screenshots of tech standing in the same places on Pabu that the shadow trooper was. Fuck. Um, the goggles, all of that stuff. So that's tech. Yeah, the go the goggles, the goggles with Omega putting that with her her teddy bear thing. So the culmination that would hurt a little bit. The culmination of all of this is going to be tech, you know, having to fight his condition, his new conditioning. Uh, also, the how was tech able to hack literally everything in that episode? Turning off alarms, hacking into the ship, everything. That's tech. Not wrong. That's yeah, tech. I agree with you, hundred percent. Tick. Um, tick. Uh, but. It's going to come down to tech having to fight off his conditioning. I'm assuming he'll succeed. And then Hemlock's going to be like, this isn't working. I need more control over them. Death troopers. Death troopers. Yeah. There you go. That's my theory. I, I mean, I, I really hope we get to the end of this and it is the death trooper program because, because he even says, he even says to, um, to, uh, Tarkin, he tells Tarkin that like, you're like, you're going to appreciate where this money is going like it's going to be in everyone's benefit that you keep on funding me did you see tarkin do try and do to him exactly what he did to krennic did you notice that mm -hmm. he was like i can yes, be of help if you tell me so i can steal it uh -huh. take credit and push you out yep, he is a exactly. dastardly son of a dude by the way did you see the video i sent you the other night that tarkin um the only uh the actor no Peter cushing's I hobby was painting uh oh oh warhammer war mini miniature like figurines from various wars and i was like oh bro's down with warhammer <laughs> yep <laughs> i love peter cushing um but um yeah tarkin um oh for context for the listeners since it's just not tim and i having a conversation one of peter cushing's hobbies was to paint miniature figurines essentially warhammer and then they would play this game with the figurines uh, and it would be different eras of war. So there was like French Revolution. Um, I don't I didn't see World War Two, so it seemed more to be colonial. Um, so I made a joke to Tim and Ben that uh, he he uh, he's be down with Warhammer if it was Mark. Saturday. Mark Hamill has some great stories about him. Oh, he uh, there's there's one where he um, he was a smoker, but he never he, he used to wear a smoking glove mm -hmm. so that he wouldn't get the smell of the cigarettes and whatnot like on his hands. Uh, he also he also used like the, the Corella Deville, the the Corella Deville like long like stick for the cigarette so that you wouldn't get the cigarette smell on you. Um, he like he liked cigarettes, he liked smoking, but he didn't like the the smelling like it. And so it was, he was a very Mark Hamill. He was a very classy individual. I mean, look at him. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's. Could you imagine the Emperor walking into the vault with all those kids? Uh, how scary because he went to the oh, ball how scary would that have been so my question is are they so once they get omega's blood they're going to be able to test moving midichlorians from these children using omega's blood into the emperor clones which are in those pods am i that's my assumption right or or kevin they're trying to make their own jedis no because project necromancer specifically for well project necromancer might be yeah, I, I'm. I'm just saying. What if they're trying to bring back dead, dead Jedi? Because doesn't doesn't this go back to what happens in in uh, was it Project Cinder at the end of or the beginning of Battlefront Operation Cinder? Two? Yeah, when they when they burn everything to the fucking ground. But the Emperor's like death plan was that if he died wasn't part of it that his consciousness would be transferred to new body. No one would know that he was alive. Everyone would think that he was dead essentially, which is essentially what happens. There is no, there is no mention in the operation cinder of moving him. Like the, everyone, everyone's a some in cinder. Um, these, the, like the bots, those are things are creepy. that had, that had his face. Um, those those were being used as a way to, to like like propaganda as well, um, but yeah, there was no like everyone knew the emperor was dead. Like there was no there was no mention even like among the higher ups of like oh yeah don't worry he's coming back. Now maybe the high the higher ups, but even then like they had no idea that he was coming back. Um, you know may, maybe Thrawn did. I but you know and again 
I don't hate the prequels as much as a lot of people do. There are parts that I can't stand, but I'm not this humongous prequel hater. Um, but five years later, it seems like we're... And again, most Star Wars fan, uh, casual fans are not going to experience this the same way you and I will. But this is the answer to somehow Palpatine returned. It's it's unfolding in front of us it's, right now. Um, yeah, it, at least it lays, it lays the groundwork for it. Right. So that's why I don't think it's resurrecting dead Jedi or anything. I truly think this is the program to create... To, his, his I, vessel, I think so too. His, yeah, I, I agree. It's all it's all about him. That's why he's so invested in it. It makes it makes so much sense. And it's interesting. But at the same time, we also clone Luke at some point. Like and like a lot of people like we, we literally and it's done in Tantus. And so like I'm really curious to see like does that actually go through? Is that going to be canonical or is it going because like, now we have cloning and we like we're bringing back an emperor that died. Like, what's to stop them from actually doing the whole cloning Luke and having an evil Luke? Like, I don't know. This is going to... The, the, the Omega, this entire storyline opens up a whole new can of worms because it's not just the Emperor. Because if you look at EU stuff, cloning was really heavy. And so this this could bring back a lot of those things that people really liked. There's so much material there. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking through the like the Legends correlations and whatnot. Like you said, evil Luke would be fun. Um, I don't know. Yeah, at, at minimum, it's it's which is interesting because in Legends, when you look at Valkorian, whatever the heck you want to call him, or Infinite Emperor, he used Sith mysticism to achieve this. And right he, now we're using science. Palpatine's trying to use science, which is interesting because Palpatine's such a student of the ancient Sith. Yes. So I'm I'm curious as to how that. Well, again, Valkorian's not canon. Uh, well, he again, he nice is, Old Republic could really help out. He is, but not in the context that we have. Like he existed. Mm -hmm. That's all we know. Um, right. So it's just interesting that he would switch to science and not unless unless Tim, there's a scientific base. And then there's a the mysticism is like the actual transfer, if you will. Like, here's my thought is, know. is the, the husk can hold the midichlorians. Right. We understand that. Yes. And the blood transfer mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But if the emperor were to suddenly die, they wouldn't have to time to sit there and like do a blood transfusion and all that. So it's more, I think, getting the blood, getting that has the ability to hold the midichlorians and then that emperor like transferring his consciousness through the force. However, that's I don't know, dude, but then you also, but it, but it doesn't make any like it, this also doesn't make sense. The transfer of consciousness like we have we have Snoke, who is it like we, we know is a failed clone of the emperor. But he has its own. He has his own uh, character. He has his own thoughts and and wants and 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 needs. He's not. He wasn't the emperor inside Snoke. Snoke was Snoke. But the emperor also and, has his son, who we learned about. Exactly. And he has no force but then powers. The, but then the son. The son was a clone of the emperor, but he was doing his own thing. He had his own consciousness. And so, how do you remove that and then insert? The Emperor, how does he take that over? None of that makes sense. And we were kind of like, we were going to kind of see it with at the end of episode nine, where he's like, strike me down. Could, and it, I will. could it be a situation where the clone didn't develop the way they needed to in both situations? And it was like, okay, without, this is... Without a consciousness? With, it just needed to be a husk? This is a failed I, I experiment. Know. So this, you know, here's your son. Yeah, I have a child, even though I'm going to treat him like garbage. Um, and then the second one is, this is a failed experiment. He can be your puppet, um, while we're, you know, raising up this army on Exegol and whatnot. I don't know. I, I this, this starts to, this starts to transcend like the nor the normalities. It it, my point of, being, it can't just be science. There has to be Sith mysticism involved in this. I agree with you. There has to be something there, but we haven't gotten there yet. And so like, does Acolyte bring that in? I don't know. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, still a lot of questions, but a lot of answers are 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 there. We just kind of have to look. For Did them. you think Crosshair was going to make the shot? No, dude, I was I was literally yelling at my team. I was like, "Don't fuck this up! Don't fuck this up!" But I, I think they, they're they're smart. There was contingency plans. Like she had the she had the comm device, which was a bait. That was a bait. They knew that was going to be there. I guarantee you there's a tracker in her hat. Yeah, no, 100%. Or when she took the hat off, I was like, oh, there's a, there's definitely a tracker under there. She's too calm. Um, the second thing, too, is even if he did miss and she thinks he got it, Echo will have by now figured out where it is. Uh, would be the backup plan. Yeah, yeah, Echo and Rex most definitely are working on that. So Echo and Rex, they'll join up with them again. Um, 
uh, I'm sure Rex has other rebels now that he can bring with him, or rebel clones. Um, mm-hmm. that maybe some we know. Maybe Wolf. Will- hopefully Wolf. Hopefully Wolf shows yeah, back the- up. And now we know about Scorch. Like I wonder if we'll like meet Scorch. Scorch seems like he's gonna be remain a bad guy. Um, mm. And then with a name like that, yeah. You know, would you be shocked if Asajj and um, Quinlan Quinlan returned for this? I did see an interesting theory that Asajj is interested in this because maybe Quinlan, um, what was it? Somebody was saying like, if Quinlan is dead or Quin- something happened to Quinlan, maybe Asajj is searching for this to like bring him back or something like that. I did see, it was a very interesting theory. Um, huh. In addition to that, someone also said the inverse. What if Quinlan got a hold of some of their research and that's how they were able to bring Asajj back? Like, cause think if he's this in love with her, he would go to any yeah. lengths to bring her back. So what if, um, I don't know if we'll see them again. Uh, we did get a guarantee last week. So, you know, I know Tim and I were pretty upset with the Asajj episode and so was a, a lot of the internet, but, um, they did say you will find out why Asajj came back and how she came back. It will not be a mystery. It's just, we're not revealing it yet. So dumb. I don't, it's like. It, I mean, like, it, like seeing Cad Bane in like Book of Boba Fett was cool. Loved that. Um, it also made sense, just like Cad made sense. Yeah, it made, being in it this made episode. sense. Like seeing Cad Bane in like this episode made sense. I'm trying to think of like other things where like they dropped characters, and you're like, I don't know. But like, <laughs> okay, perfect example is is Mandalorian season two point five in Book of Boba Fett, where you're like, what the hell are they doing? Like, why are we getting this teaser for this thing that's later on down the road? You're taking away from the main the main show. And it, it kind of derailed. I, in my opinion, last week's episode derailed the Bad Batch because of introducing such a critical character that is covered in multiple forms of Star Wars medium. And we don't get a clear, concise picture as to why she's back. We get no, we get no flashbacks. We get no dialogue. We we have no indication that she died and was resurrected outside of the book. And if you didn't read the book, you wouldn't know. And that's also very frustrating to me because you just like Asajj has her. She has her thing in Clone Wars. And then she kind of just like falls off. And then we get this book that tells the rest of her story, which is awesome. And then we know she dies and then she comes back. Like, it's just, it's so disjointed. I feel like Charlie trying to match all the freaking red lines everywhere. I don't like it. This is the part of Star Wars that really starts to frustrate me. Um, is because we have to, we have to cover, like, if, if you really want to know, if you want to figure it out. You've got it. You've got to cover. You've got to go through all of these 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 hula hoops. You got to jump through. But that's a, and just that's also what I mean with not a fan with, of it. Um, what you said about uh, um, damn it, I lost my train of thought there with the hula hoops. Where were we going with that? Oh, forget it. I lost jumping it. through ho- jump jumping through hoops to figure out what they're talking about. Yeah, it's it's it, it's. Is it like Knights of the Old Republic? No, 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 no. It, it, it's frustrating, but. It, you know, when when at the end of the day, when it comes to all of the mediums that Star Wars is, the hardcore fans are always going to dive in deeper. You, pe- most people definitely. do it with Lord of the Rings. Like most people that are like, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I've seen the movies. If I said the words Tom Bombadil, most would have no idea who I'm talking about. Sure. Um, and I'm not trying to sound like some elitist fan or anything like that. Enjoy it at your pace, at your level. I'm not that guy. I don't care how you consume the 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 content and you know what your favorite part is. Not everyone likes to read comic books. Not everyone likes to read a book. That's my point. I don't like to That's read a book. Point. I would rather listen to a book. So um, I'm totally okay with that. But at the end of the day, um, I think something like how the Emperor returned being yeah. somehow versus here's the st- Now, again, also, Tim, a lot of this is backtracking. Like, you know, that line got written into the movie by J.J., we know what it is now. Maybe since I have the opportunity to tell a much deeper story over a longer time period on a cheaper budget, let's tell that yeah. story. So again, a lot of it is that too. I don't want to just sit there and be like, "Oh, you know, that's it." But it is. It is frustrating. 
uh, with the Assad stuff. Uh, and I think a lot of the frustration and what people will not acknowledge is that the reason we're frustrated cause is because we're huge fans of Asajj. Uh, I, 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 and I wasn't a big fan of her until I read that book. Yeah, I have like, to agree. She was just like fun. She was just a bad. She was just a fun bad guy. And, like she was kind of edgy and like I love the joke of like she always runs away, you know, because she did. Like she always just like she always found a way to like run away at the very end and like escape, and that was always kind of funny. Um, but then I felt really connected to her character after reading the book because like you really feel for her. You're like, man, you went through some shit. And then, and then she dies at the end. You're like, okay, I'm happy with that ending. Like, if they would have just laid her to rest, it would have been fine. But now she's back, and without with without any pretense, it's just like we know that she's dead. And then she just appears, and she's bounty hunting again. Where's Quinlan? What happened there? Um, there's just like, how did she come back? What like what resurrection ceremony was there? Like. What what happened? And and so like, but now we have to wait. How do you drop a character like that? Some like I just I I don't understand. And it's just it's again, it's that it's that Star Wars stelly, storytelling where it's you have to you go forward and backwards to get to the present. You gotta go to the future to see like what they're gonna do, and then you have to go back to the past to then follow the steps to then get to where we are right now. I don't think Acolyte's gonna have anything special for us. I know people are speculating that. I just don't see it happening. But there could be smaller answers to why things are the way they are. Um, sure. Uh, we'll see. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to jump the gun on that one. So I'm hoping we get more insight um, on same Asajj, but Asajj aside going into bad batch. What's next. We're in the home stretch now. I don't think they're going to take their foot off the gas at this point. I think the no, you can't. filler episode that you got uh, i think they're done yeah i think now it's it's we have to locate tantus go to tantus and save omega but there's going to be so many problems that occur along the way uh including getting into tantus who's going to do the breaking into tantus because that's going to be i think emery is going to help out a lot emery is emery is feeling i think emery there's a long i think it was a long con with uh nala say and emery and, it, and I didn't think there was anything until she dropped off Omega's doll to the girl that she met. And she like Emery getting to see how they were treating the kids and like they don't even have names, you know, referring them to their like their code name, like their their barcode names, like how they're being inventoried and how Hemlock is like they're nothing more than science projects. You know, it's just like. They're nothing more than assets. And she's like, no, they're, they're real freaking people. They're kids mm -hmm. uh, watching the commando, like stun the kid. Like I think Emery at the very end is she's going to be like, I'm a clone. That's my sister. These are my brothers. Screw the empire. Let's blow this bitch up. That's I think that's how it's going to go. And I think Emery's going to be a big key to it because Emery is going to meet back up with Omega because now she has all the clearance that she needs. Omega's gonna get thrown into something. Emery's gonna help her out, and then they're somehow going to get in contact with the gang, and then everyone's gonna come, and there's gonna be a big battle at Tantus, and it's gonna be it's gonna be nutty, and they're gonna blow that thing up. There's no there's no way that Tantus survives because it has to blow up to throw the Emperor's plans off to why he has to go all the way to Exegol and run that shit out there, and why uh, Gideon is having problems. And like the and I I think we're gonna get more in uh in Mando I think we're gonna get more into the cloning stuff and why Grogu is so important with uh, and like so now that we know that Grogu and Omega are tied, Grogu must have the same the the same binding characteristics as Omega, and then it, we will then figure out what Gideon was doing with all of his science projects. I think he ended up inheriting all of Hemlock's stuff or he found it as an isb agent he went looking he went looking at where all this money went he's like why are we spending all this money if he's internal if he's internal affairs and maybe he was working with tarkin and he's like oh this this guy out here is using all of this money what's he doing and then we st and he starts digging and he starts finding out about cloning and operation ne and, and project necromancer and all this stuff he's like oh cool the emperor's dead no one's in charge i'm gonna start doing my own shit because we know those clones were not the Emperor. We know for a fact that those are not the Emperor's clones. 
Those I I wholeheartedly believe, based off of how Gideon behaves, he only cares about himself. I think he cares about his about his glory. He wants to be in charge. He wants to run the whole fucking show. He wanted to make force sensitive clones. I mean, he wanted to be a Mandalorian. Why wouldn't he want to be a Jedi? Mm hmm. It just makes so, sense. Yep. I think there's I think there's a lot more there. And I think once we get to the end of Bad Batch, I think they will tease something with Moff Gideon to tie it into Boba Fett or back into Mandalorian. Cause man, like this is like, this is it. This is going to, exp- because we didn't know about any of this until the first episode of Mando. And so like, this is finally, we now understand everything going into that first episode. Why, why they were looking for, for a high M count uh, target, like why they wanted to do all these things to Grogu, like why they were, why he was so important to the did, empire. Did they debunk that Grogu's a clone already? I feel like they yeah, did. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, because he's a child. No, but I'm he's saying, a ba- I'm saying, you know, there's no way he's a clone. There's no way that they, they, they cloned Yoda and then gave him back to the Jedi to then teach at the Jedi temple. No, 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 I don't no not that. that. Well, at the time it would have been the Republic and it would have been on, um, no, because that it would have been on Camino, but they weren't I'm like, I don't see why Yoda line, would be OK with how that. How old would he be if he's 50? Then so he'd be 30. It doesn't make sense. Time doesn't add up. No, nope, doesn't. None of that makes nope. sense. So I cr- I truly believe that Grogu is just from the same place that Yoda and um, yeah, the other one when Yaddle are from. We just we haven't gotten to that part yet. And and that's it. That is just it. He is just he is just the same race as Yoda and Yaddle, and they were looking for high, like they were still, like, okay, Dr. Pershing need, he was, he got put on the, the team and he was given all of Hemlock's research. That, that is my, this is my theory is that Gideon being an ISB agent, he went and dug all of that stuff up after the empire fell. He grabbed all of it, gave it to Dr. Pershing and that's it. So my question to you then would be um, if Gideon took over this program under the guise of the shadow, or I should say telling the shadow council that he was doing the research for the emperor. Meanwhile, he was doing it for himself. That's what I think. Yeah. That's yeah. because he still has yeah. a. They haven't ostracized him from the Shadow Council, and there's no way that Hux would be okay with him cloning versions, force sensitive versions. No, no, of no, himself. no, no. This is all. No, Gideon has done a lot under uh, under the shadow as, of I'm doing this for the greater. As good. most of the moths were, we learned in aftermath, they were all acting in their own self interest. Yeah, it was a huge power struggle at the very end. They all wanted to run the shit. So as loosely as they were able to hold things together with the Shadow Council, they were all in business for themselves. And we obviously know that Hux is the winner at the end of all that. And what's great is that also plays into the whole, like if you if you go back to um, the the original Thrawn book, um, uh, I'd, Heir to the Empire. The name is, if you go back to Heir to the Empire, um, the Emperor was able to like cast out his aura of like control throughout all of like through everybody. And so kind of everyone was like under like they were under like his spell. And so like that kind of plays into like why there was such a huge power struggle after he died and not while he was alive, which I think is great. And don't forget, if you really want to link it all back to it is Captain Pallion, who is Thrawn's right hand man in the end of the empire is in the shadow council meeting at the end of Mandalorian Mm-hmm. So linking it back to Ahsoka and everything, like all of this is happening, and the Thrawn's getting all the intel fed back to oh, him. Oh yeah, for sure, most definitely. Guaranteed, he has maintained contact, even though he was in the other galaxy. Intergalactic, you, wait, you mean intergalactic <laughs> communication. You think even, with Pelion? Even if it, even if it took like two days to get to him, like the message, the coded message. I guarantee you. There's no way they introduce Pelion and then Thrawn shows up in Ahsoka and there's no link between the two of them. Sorry, I don't buy it. No, I agree with you. Or even if he shows back up, Pelion will just be like, hey, you missed a lot. Let me fill you in on what's been going on yeah. while you're gone. Because in we, Air of the Empire, Pelion's insanely loyal to Thrawn. Mm-hmm. We still have we still have uh, the, the whole Chiss Ascendancy to play around with. We still have What's-His-Face who, who went to the Chiss Ascendancy who was Eli. with Thrawn. 
but Eli Vanto. Um, so Vanto's out with the Chiss. We got Pelion who's in the freaking Shadow Council. Yep. Like Thrawn, Thrawn holds all the cards. That's why, that is why the movie is, in my opinion, will bring all of the, it, it's gonna, it'll, it'll finally bring it all together. Cause like, I, I still don't think Timothy Zahn would make all of those books to just like poop on them after the fact. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think so either. But it all comes back to Thrawn at the very end. Maybe we'll even get Mara Jade and Sebioth at the end of all of this. That'd be kind of cool. No, that's a lot. <laughs> I would, I'd be down for, I would, I would be down. Huge I, chunk of, we don't know what happened to Luke and all of this. The huge no, I chunk. agree with you. I think, I think Mar. I think it would make sense with Mara Jade. Why Luke went crazy. Um, like why he went and isolated himself. Like I still don't like the whole like Luke had a bad dream, so he wanted to go kill his nephew. Like there's way more to that. Uh, there's got to be. Uh, why would he go into exile? I think it's because he has a broken heart. I think it's because his wife died. Uh, so and then to have Jedi uh, to have Master the, a clone of Sebioth again, Kevin the cloning. Like it, like we know that's not actually Master Sebioth. That's a goddamn clone. Mm-hmm. And so if we have all the tech, if we know all this stuff, like what would stop them from doing that? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there it is. There's a lot, man. There's there's like it's funny. Like we when we when we first started the call, we're like, man, there's not a lot going on. I really didn't think we were going to be recording this long. No, for an no, episode. that was because honestly, this episode, this episode begins to open the door for everything else that we've experienced, and it's it's finally kind of bringing it all together. I knew this was going to be a long one because once we realized what was in the vault, and it was nothing that anyone would have ever thought it was, I knew that it would open up the doors to speculation, and people would start. The conversation of linking everything that we've been experiencing, I would say, for the past five or six years, it all it's all yep. coming together. Um, and it's not going to be done at the end of Bad Batch. Like Tim said, it's no. going to be Dave's movie that probably uh, does. and even then they'll still fill in pieces along the way of things that happened. Even let's say Mara Jade shows up in the movie. Cool. Like there's still got to be a story told of she's there. They fall in love. They get married. Luke you know, preaches about relationships uh, and, and cause I think in the, in the legends, uh, Luke basically changes that rule for the new Jedi order. Like you can't ever loving. Yeah. But then look at all the trouble. Like that's the problem too, is like, we all are like, Oh, it's so stupid that they can't love, but like, look at all the fallout when they don't. <laughs> so it's, mm-hmm. it's almost like the Jedi order is right. But you know, what? <laughs> but at the end of the day, is your free will more important than a set of rules? That's what it comes down to. That's the, mm-hmm. you know, can you control yourself yeah. in that situation? So, um, absolutely not. We are going to get out of here, but thank you so much for tuning into this episode of star Wars and scotch. We'll be back next week for more bad batch, um, single episodes from here on out. So, uh, are they longer? Mm, they don't think I saw run time. These yet. are the, these both clocked in at 25 minutes. Yeah, I have a feeling the the next few will remain at 25 minutes, and then the finale will probably be like 45 minutes. Um, yeah, that's fair. So uh, we'll see. I haven't seen run times so. though. Um, but make sure you go check out Tim's content, uh, Darkness429, everywhere, YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, Twitter, everywhere. Uh, hell divers, hell divers, hell divers. Um, so much hell divers, Kevin. You're also hell diving. I am hell diving. Yeah. Now that you can find him, uh, where you're, you're pretty much everywhere. Your YouTube, your Twitch, Twitch, TikTok, your TikTok live space, live space yeah, yeah, yeah. So. uh, my space, yeah. our space. Mm-hmm. It's K magic one Oh one everywhere, except for Twitter. It's Kevin X vision mm-hmm. over on Twitter. Yeah. I can't get K magic one one So <laughs> bastards, if you're squatting on it. I hate you. Um, but, uh, yeah, and we are Star Wars and Scotch. You can check us out, Star Wars Scotch, Star Wars Scotch, everywhere on the interwebs. Uh, very excited for the conclusion of Bad Batch, and then we wait like three weeks. We'll have some guests on, and then <laughs> it's <laughs> Acolyte. Right in Acolyte, I can't wait. So, uh, which I have to figure out, because I'm supposed to go on vacation in June. Uh, so, anniversary. Uh, we'll figure that out, though. I will hopefully be like on the beach recording with Tim, be like... Pretty sure we've done that before. Live from the beach. On, <laughs> I feel like you were on your you were on an anniversary trip and we had to record something. I did the um I did the uh, trailer for um That's what Jedi, it was. Uh, we were both Survivor. gone. Yeah, you were out of town yeah. and I was out of town, so I recorded my yeah, reaction. Yeah, yeah, so we were doing it on our phone and shit. Yeah. Yeah, on my anniversary. I definitely didn't get side eye for that one. Um <laughs> But uh, yeah, check us out, Star Wars Scotch. Rate, review, subscribe. It helps us out immensely. But we will see you next week for more Star Wars and Scotch. But in the meantime, may the force be with you.